Hello, welcome back to the RC Pilots Log. My name's Rob. Today I am starting a new project. As you can see, I have this quarter scale SIG clipped wing cub kit. Uh, I bought this um, used, well, second hand, uh, but unstarted, unopened uh, from a chap called Adam on the BMFA Classifieds website. Um, Adam got it here nice and quickly. It's in really good condition uh, and all present and correct. I'm not gonna do an unboxing. Um, I'm just gonna get straight into it. No messing around in this video uh, with this project. Um, I want to get it done in good time. Uh, I'm gonna try and keep my evenings uh, as free as possible to work on this. Um, uh, once my kids are gone to bed and sort of the later end of the evening, uh, I'm gonna try and dedicate a couple of hours as frequently as possible to building this and hopefully get it done in good time. The only thing I'm not super keen on on this kit um, is that some of the uh, some of the parts are screen printed and I'm gonna have to cut those out uh, myself rather than them being uh, laser or die cut. I think that's because this is a, an older kit. Um, this laser cutting might not have been around when this was manufactured um, and uh, die cutting this thickness, um, this is quarter of inch balsa stock um, would be, I think, quite difficult to achieve. Um, but nonetheless, um, we will do it. There's not a huge amount to cut out, uh, apart from uh, these four sections, five sections. So there is quite a lot, actually. Um, all of these have to be cut out by hand um, or using a scroll saw, which I don't have. Um, so I'm going to see if I'm going to borrow one. If that's not possible, then I'll either look to buy one um, secondhand or find another method. But anyway, I'm going to clear the decks, get my building surface area ready, get some plans out um, and crack on with the first stage. Wow, that's impressive. These are really, really clear plans. Um, and uh, yeah, impressive. Um, I think my only comparison at the moment is to the Balsa USA plans for the Cetabria, um, which were a big one big roll, which I cut up. Um, I may have to cut these down to the individual parts to get them on my workspace. Um, but for the most part, um, I should be able to fold these uh, and position them so that I can work on the piece I want to work on without cutting them, um, which is really nice. So I'm just going to work out, uh, look at the, the build manual um, and then work out which plan I need to start with um, and start following the steps. So the very first step uh, is a bit of cutting. Um, I've got some quarter inch ply that starts uh, making the first former, um, which is actually uh, the cockpit former or the rear of the cockpit, uh, the windshield former. Um, so it looks like, uh, according to the plans, we're going to build these three formers up here first, F5, F6 and F7, um, and they're all built out of uh, ply and balsa that all needs to be cut to size. So um, I've got a feeling this is going to be quite a cutting intensive uh, build. Um, but I'm up for the challenge. I've spent quite a bit of time with the scroll saw uh, and I've got the main fuselage formers uh, cut out of this 5 16th balsa stock. Um, I have to say that's not, uh, when you pay this much for a kit, it's not nice to have to cut all of that out. Um, it wasn't a tough job, it wasn't very hard, but um, I have to say that's where the Balsa USA kit um, has come into its own a little bit, is there was none of this kind of uh, cutting out of stock printed shapes. Um, I think that's the bulk of the fuselage ones done. Um, I certainly don't need any more for the next few steps. Um, uh, something else to note on this, um, as I'm starting to lay out the pieces for the fuselage size is that um, the plan splits into two uh, for the fuselage. So there's a, a line here, reference line, and on the rest of the plan, uh, a reference line down there. So at some point, I will need to either cut the plans or build my reference line, mark my reference line on the structure, um, and then move on to the next half.
So that's another evening gone and another couple of hours on the cub. Um, and I have one fuselage side framed up. Um, the next stage now, according to the build manual, is to uh, create a mirror image of this or a duplicate of this over the top so they're identical. Um, and then we're going to flip them, flip one of them and mirror them side to side with uh, a plywood former on the front end. Um, and then it starts to get a lot more uh, 3D, uh, a lot more three-dimensional, building up the main formers um, and getting them square, uh, attaching the two fuselage halves together and pinching the tail. So um, once I've done the other side of this, that should start taking shape very quickly. Um, so far, so good. Uh, I'm pleased. I have noticed I've made one small error. Um, and if I just grab the main formers here, I can show you what I mean. Um, so the uh, these three main formers um, are essentially just um, half inch by quarter inch stock uh, built into a frame. Um, this one has a doubler on it. Um, but what I've done wrong is this lower part on each of them um, should actually be on top uh, of the vertical pieces. Um, and I have done it below um, uh, and between. Um, so this one, it, it's between the two. Um, and these two is below. And that's from my mistake from reading the plans and looking at the pictures wrong. Um, I have done a bit of research and I can't see there being any issue with this. Um, if it is for strength, then I can simply add another piece, uh, a brace across here. I don't think that's gonna be an issue though. Um, I think that these are gonna be plenty strong enough as they are. Um, I've used epoxy on them as well. Um, so they're not going anywhere. Um, and as I said, I can't see anywhere in the plans or in the build manual or on photos online where this would cause an issue. Um, so I'm going to carry on uh, with it like that. I don't need to, don't think I need to take them apart and change it. Um, but I just need to uh, consider that if I ever come into a bit of a, an issue further down the road, I'll remember that those were not quite according to the plans. Um, but fingers crossed it won't be a problem. So the fuselage is coming together quite nicely now. Uh, both sides have now been glued to the main formers um, and I've just finished gluing the tail uh, together where the, the two tail blocks are beveled uh, to meet on a center line. Um, and uh, my first impressions of this kit, it builds quickly, um, but uh, I can see why it's called uh, a SIG Craftsman kit. Um, there's, uh, in terms of comparison to the Balsa USA kit, um, there's a lot more cutting. Um, and there's also less information in the build manual. Um, so much so that I've made a couple of mistakes and had to rectify those um, and also had to kind of think on my toes a bit and work out how to do a few steps. Um, but it's fine as long as you read ahead a bit. Um, if you look at the plans carefully, um, th there's no major issues uh, and nothing major to catch you out on. All of the frame is now uh, cross braced um, and uh, it's nice and straight. Uh, I'm really, really pleased with that. Um, it looks great. I think it's a, a fantastic view looking straight down the fuselage like that and um, seeing all the forms there uh, nice and square and true. Um, excuse the background noise, it's a very warm day. I have a fan running um, over there. Uh, so this is coming across, uh, coming along nicely. Um, I've also, uh, last night I epoxied together the three piece firewall, uh, it's three sheets of ply um, there and I've also mounted, uh, aligned and mounted the NGH GT25. Um, this is the same motor that was in the Cetabria. Um, there's, I've had it running, uh, there appears to be no damage, it appears to be running very well. Um, the only damage that I found was a, a broken exhaust, um, but uh, I broke one of those exhausts just putting it on, so they're very, very delicate. Um, so the one that was on here was actually a replacement, um, but I will need to get a different style exhaust for it anyway. Um, I'm not sure uh, a wraparound one is going to fit because I, we're quite close to the firewall there to get uh, inside the cowl. Um, but this fits very nicely. Um, there's one and a half degrees uh, down thrust built into 
the, the frame uh, built into the plans, so I don't need to worry about that. Uh, just one, when I set it up, I may add a washer to get some right thrust in there. Um, but uh, for all intents and purposes, it doesn't look like it needs it uh, from a lot of the forums I've seen. Um, so we should be good. Um, so uh, that's nicely mounted. Um, good little engine this, I really enjoy it. Um, really enjoyed it in the Cetabria for the, the five flights it had, or the four flights, the fifth was bad. Um, so uh, that's ready to, to build up on the front firewall uh, and the nose section, which I think is the next task. In the interest of getting this model done uh, in a good time um, and uh, being able to enjoy it before the flying season kind of draws to a close uh, at the end of the autumn, um, I've been pushing ahead and I forgot to uh, thought I got to record quite a few steps. Um, but as you can see, uh, it's coming together pretty well. Um, the fuselage, I would say, is about 80% 80, 80 complete here. Um, Lots has gone into this uh, off camera and I'll try and talk through a few of the bits. Um, the most significant deviation from plan um, is around the inside um, of the fuselage nose uh, and the, the power motor section. Um, I've reinforced that with some plywood, uh, light ply, which I've lightened further, uh, drilling some holes in. Um, consensus is it's generally not needed, um, but I just felt, it just for me, it wasn't quite strong enough. Um, so I did that um, and I have obviously, I've cut out uh, the scale door profile here um, and I need to work out how I'm gonna hinge that and make that work nicely. Um, all of the tail formers are in place uh, and the top three stringers. There's still the side stringers uh, and the lower stringers to go on there. Um, I've left the uh, top part of the nose uncovered at the moment uh, because I have got uh, my fuel tank here. Um, this is a McGregor, McGregor uh, 500 milliliter fuel tank um, that I bought from Sussex Model Centre, my local model shop, um, and had that delivered. Um, and I've also um, bought a, it's all a bit dusty from all the sanding, uh, bought a dual um, power switch uh, with a fuel dot built in. Uh, this is from Hobby King um, and uh, I won May's crash cash uh, from Hobby King for the crash of the Cetabria. So uh, every cloud has a silver lining. Um, so that's gone towards uh, getting this switch and the fuel dot built in. Um, a couple of uh, lithium iron phosphate LIFE battery packs, um, which will run directly to my receiver and the ignition unit. Uh, virus via an opto kill switch. Um, so all of that's on its way, um, and uh, and that was a nice little lift to to win the crash cash and be able to uh, get a few more bits at this stage. Um, but the fuel tank uh, is a nicely pre-built one. I prefer that over uh, the, the screw lid type over this kind of bung fitting of the kind of the Sleck and the Sullivan style. Uh, sorry, the Sullivan. Uh, style here with the the rubber bungs that you squeeze and tighten down with the screw. I always find they they do leak. Uh, no matter how I set them up, they leak. Um, whereas this one, you can't really over tighten or under tighten it. There's a rubber seal in the screw of the bottle, uh, and you you screw that down. So um, this should fit very 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 nicely uh, in the model. Um, and what I plan to do um, is I have drilled a small hole. Uh, in the front of the firewall, um, and I will uh, poke the the um, the nipple of the lid uh, through the firewall, um, and that way I can have the very shortest uh, fuel tube possible, um, which is going to aid uh, in just many different ways. Um, so that's going to be mounted in there on a blocks on uh, with a velcro strap, um, and then the uh, the fill and the breather. Uh, may come out the top here. Um, I may look to mount the the filler and the fuel dot uh, somewhere resembling um, the the dashboard, the cockpit, and the instrument panel. Um, I'm not sure about that yet because any any leaks of fuel then is just going to go straight into the inside, and I'm not sure on that. Um, alternative for that is to have it mounted uh, on the bottom panel here, um, so that. I'm switching on and off from on the underside uh, and filling on the underside so that any fuel leaks is coming straight out. Um, I quite like that idea. Uh, it's a very generally not a uh, not a position of the model you're going to look at uh, when it's on the ground and when you're in the air. Very unlikely that 
that that's going to cause anyone any uh, any upset that is a non-scale feature. But I'm not sure on that yet. Again, that will come out as I as I build it. Um, so on the whole, it's going together very well. Um, I did have one issue uh, that um, around uh, getting this nose piece on and the firewall square uh, according to the plans. Um, and the only thing I found was that my firewall was uh, the sorry this motor box was not aligning to the angles on uh, the, the fuselage sides correctly. So whether I misbuilt one of these fuselage sides and this angle wasn't quite right, um, or there is another misalignment, I don't yet know. Um, but I overcame it by just uh, inserting a, a little filler strip here um, and uh, epoxying that in and sanding that smooth. Now the firewall still aligns to the plans and the tail still aligns to the plans. Um, so where this misalignment has come from, I'm not sure, um, but I should be able to uh, I should be able to counter any any twist or anything like that when I come to do the wings and the tail. As long as those measurements are good, um, then anything forward of that uh, can be shimmed and adjusted uh, as I need to. Um, but I'm confident that won't be an issue. Um, so uh, I think all is going well. Um, very much enjoying building the kit. Uh, there is it, it is really is building with this one um, there's a lot more cutting and sanding and and um, fine tuning things with this than uh, the Balsa USA Satabri kit um, I'm not sure on the Balsa USA Cub kit whether that is a similar kind of craftsman kit style where um, a lot of the stuff you have to build for yourselves um, but the other big difference is is the build manual there's a lot less steps detailed in the SIG kit uh, than there is to to the Balsa USA Cetabria. So they're the two big uh, takeaways for it in terms of comparison. Um, but I think this is a nice step on from that. Um, if this was exactly the same, uh, very detailed, very pre-cut, pre, um, pre-fabricated, uh, it wouldn't be as much of a challenge and it wouldn't be that step on for me. So it's going well um, and I was hoping to maybe get the whole fuselage done for this episode and split these videos up into to three or four having the fuse done the tails the wings uh, and then kind of the final assembly and finishing but um we'll see how that goes obviously i've not finished the fuse yet um but i may get that done before the next uh the next video anyway i've been waffling a lot uh, and not a lot of building um in this video so apologies for that but i was very keen to get in and get going on it i do have a um club scale barbecue day um, on the 4th of July. I would love to get this finished, but I just don't think that's gonna happen. Um, life is busy for me and I squeeze in a few hours here, there and everywhere. And it's by the grace of my wife that I'm allowed to, uh, that, I, that I can get away with that. Allowed is not the right word. Um, that uh, that I can get away with, with doing that. Um, she's very understanding and very considerate and I love her lots. Um, so uh, I don't think 4th of July is gonna be uh, a goer but uh, you never know so I'll keep plugging away I'll keep pushing on um, hope you enjoyed the video um, thank you so much to everyone for your continued support thanks for watching um, and happy and safe flying take care